This is Dr. Ted Hildebrandt in his New Testament History, Literature, and Theology course, lecture number 18, on the book of John, character portrayals of Nathaniel, Nicodemus, the woman of Samaria, and Doubting Thomas. Well, welcome back to another presentation on the book of John. Uh, we've been talking about John as kind of the person of John and him as the beloved disciple and uh, him being very Jewish and Palestinian in orientation, very detailed oriented in terms of times and places, very aware of the topography of Palestine. And then uh, last uh, class period, we went over basically some major themes that we were talking about in John. The purpose of John is so that we might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing we might have life in his name. And so belief is a big thing. And so we, we basically worked with belief, and then we also worked with um, some of the sign miracles that Jesus did to stimulate belief. And one of those sign miracles was Jesus making water to wine. So we took the wedding feast at Canaan, and Jesus making water to wine in John 2. We talked about the issue of wine and, and how to how, what are various approaches to handling that from a scriptural basis and then also from a modern pra practical basis. And then after that, we talked about Jesus as God and John being one of those things that in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God, the Logos was God. And so we showed various ways through scripture to show that Jesus Christ is God. It wasn't added later by the church, but it's embedded in the early documents, the very earliest documents of the church, that Jesus Christ was God. So in the Jehovah Witnesses, we talked some about that last time. Now what I'd like to do is we're talking about belief now, and I'd like to see how John records, and he's very sensitive to people. Uh, Dr. Steve Hunt now, that Gordon here, is writing a book, editing a book uh, of all the characters in, the, in John. John seems to be very sensitive to picking up uh, the fine points of these various characters. So I want to look at some of these characters and see how these characters move from where they were to a stance of belief. Okay, So this is the belief in terms of hitting individuals. And the first individual that I'd like to look at in terms of these character portrayals would be this guy, Nathaniel. And I call Nathaniel the skeptic. And so what happens is, Philip, this is in chapter 1, verses 45 and following, and let me just read through the story here, and you'll recognize this. Chapter 1, verse 45. Philip found Nathanael and told him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law, and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nath Nazareth? Can any good thing come from there? Nathanael asked. Come and see, Philip said. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching... So Nathaniel's initial reaction to Jesus was, he's from Nazareth, nothing good can come from that town. Okay, And when Jesus saw Nathaniel approaching, he said of him, here is a true Israelite in whom there is nothing false. So Jesus picks up on Nathaniel and kind of breaks into his world and flatters him. Says something, not flattery in a bad sense, but telling him, actually, here is a true Israelite in whom there is nothing false. Jesus usually didn't say that of many people. Jesus usually said, woe unto you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, and usually pointed out flaws in people. You know, people, Peter, you're going to deny me three times. But with Nathaniel, he says, here is a true Israelite in whom there is nothing false. How do you know me, Nathaniel asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Now, we don't know what was going on under this fig tree, but apparently Nathaniel was under the fig tree and it was something he was thinking about or something was going on in his head. And basically, Jesus goes right to it. I saw you before Philip called you under the fig tree. And then all of a sudden, here's Nathaniel, the skeptic, who kind of profiled Jesus. Okay, He's from Nazareth. And what he does is he stereotypes Jesus. He's from Nazareth. I've, I've met people from Nazareth. They're all like this kind of thing. He profiles Jesus. And now Jesus breaks into the world of the skeptic breaks into his world and says, I saw you while you were under the fig tree. You were an Israelite in whom there's no guile. I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. That is a tremendous, do you see the switch there? Jesus breaks into the skeptic's world and he basically tells him two things that <laughs> the skeptic can't make sense out of. And basically, oh, wow, you know me better than, it's incredible. You knew that going on. And Nathaniel then just 
totally does a flip. From nothing good can come out of Nazareth, he flips, he declares, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. And Jesus said, you believe. Notice the issue with belief in John. You believe because I told you, I saw you under the fig tree. You shall see greater things than that. He then added, I tell you the truth, and this may be a little hint as far as what was going on under the fig tree. I tell you the truth, that you will see heaven open and angels ascending, angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Son of Man is, of course, Jesus, how he identifies himself. I tell you the truth, you will see the heavens open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Where have we seen these angels going up and down from heaven? Where have we seen that? Jesus is referring to something that we got last semester in the Old Testament. Does anybody remember what that was? Yeah. Angels ascending and descending. That's the Jacob's Ladder story. Okay, The story of Jacob's Ladder, where Jacob at Bethel lays down his head on a rock, and he has a dream with these angels ascending and descending, going up and down Jacob's Ladder. Or we said Old Testament was a ziggurat, possibly a stairway, going up to the top with the, uh, the house of the God at the top, and the angels going up and down. And now he's, Jesus is taking that for himself. So Jesus breaks into Nathaniel's world, recognizes his character. Nathaniel's uh, a little bit stunned at that, and then Jesus puts his finger right on something that Nathaniel was thinking. And Nathaniel totally flips. The skeptic, when the skeptic finally gets convinced, the skeptic is a person who jumps in both feet. You are the son of, Rabbi, you are the son of God. Okay, Jumps in both feet. And so you see Jesus handling this uh, skeptic and things. And, uh, you know, what are some of the benefits and what are some of the cures of skepticism? There's, there's certain benefits to it and things like that. A lot of times... Skeptics keep things at, at an arm's distance, and so they're skeptical because they're, they're non-committal. They're non-committal, and they uh, basically they're not engaged uh, personally and stuff. They keep things safe. If you're skeptic, you don't have to really give yourself to something because if you're skeptical, you can keep everything out there, and you're, you're safe. So a skeptic's position, while it's always viewed as being cutting edge and skeptical, it actually is a very safe position because with a skeptic, you ain't got any skin in the game, so to speak. When you're a skeptic, everything is safe. You stand back as the great critic, and you stand back disengaged, and therefore you can criticize everybody else because you're not risking anything. You're not putting your neck out there at all. And so skeptics, but when a skeptic then flips, all of a sudden then from being disengaged, all of a sudden now he's engaged, and he basically realizes Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and uh, he totally flips. And so this is kind of a kind of a neat story there with Nathaniel. This is how Nathaniel in chapter one of um, John comes to know Christ. And this is how his how belief, how Jesus stimulates belief in there by uh, telling him these things. Now, 